your house. We can worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask your blessings on each and every one that's gathered out this morning. Father, would you especially bless those that are lost? Bless the brethren as they come before us. Words might be spoken whereby they could be saved. In Christ's name we pray. We give you honor and glory this morning. Amen. 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 Uh, today is the Wade Spence Memorial here today. And it's a wonderful congregation. And I'm sure the Spence family would really appreciate you coming and support in this service today. And uh, well, still, it's a memorial service, but still, it's a day of worship. So let's, let's put our hearts in, into the service today. Welcome each and every one of you. We've got more books up here. If you want to come in, join with us. Page 
coming each day. Every day since Jesus is mine. Truly mine, I travel the road. Narrow road to glory divine. To glory divine, the way is called straight. The way is called straight. That enters the gate. That enters the gate. I'm winging my way. I'm winging.
Take a moment and cheer. Take a moment and cheer. God's love and love and glory give out. From the moment you're saved. the moment you're saved. Hell, happy you'll shout and happy you'll be. Take a moment and Sister Vicky, come up and help me sing a song. <clears throat> Sister Vicky Maynard, how many Vickies we got in here? <laughs> come on, Sister Sue, let's sing a <clears throat> She's old and slow. <clears throat> Save me from sin. Yeah, 
The journey's been long and I'm nearing the end. What a journey, what a journey it's been. Now I started on this journey years ago with the Lord. And sometimes my ship's in a storm. But the Lord has kept his promise to never leave me. And someday my ship will sail home What a journey it's been Since I met the Master And Jesus saved me from sin The journey's been long And I'm nearing the end What a journey, what a journey it's been Yes, my journey's been long, and I'm nearing the end. What a journey, what a journey it's been. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I've enjoyed every bit of it. Not all been real smooth, Brother Henry. Been a few bumps in the road. Had to go through a few valleys by the time. But the good has outweighed the bad soil. Been far, far, far more good than they have bad. And the good is so good you can't tell it how good it is. You can't explain it. Explain. But one day it's going to come to an end. Like that song said, my ship's going to sail home. <coughs> then it'll all be good. All be right at time. Just a little branch on a mighty tree. I'm just a little branch on a mighty tree. When I need rain, you let it rain on me. I'm just a little branch on a mighty tree. I You make me strong. Yes, yes. You placed me here where I belong. Yep. I can feel your mighty hand as it purchases me. I'm just a little branch on a mighty tree. Lord, I'm just a little branch on a mighty tree. Just a little branch on a mighty tree. Lord, I'm just a little branch on a mighty tree. I'm just a little branch on a mighty tree. When I need rain, you let it rain on me. I'm just That tree's big enough to get, take this whole world in. Amen. I don't care where you're at on this world. If you're on this earth moving around, you've got an opportunity to get on that tree <coughs> and become one of the branches. And if you if you ever get in it, you hang on. Uh, uh, if you if you get cut off, you're going to it's going to be bad. Yeah.
While we sing this, and you can stand, I know it's a good congregation, hard to get around to everybody, but while we sing this, and you can stand if you want to, and fellowship one with another while we sing this. Song. One day I was walking, day I was walking down Sin's Lonesome Road. Down Sin's Lonesome Road. My life was all trouble. Start out with that determination, you'll make it. Start out with that determination. We're going to shortly go to the Lord in prayer. I think we've had a good time up to this point. It feels like I've been to church already this morning. Thank the Lord for His goodness and His mercy. Thank Him for His grace. That he's bestowed upon us. And, and, uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer shortly. If you have someone you want to mention before we go to prayer, if you'll free to do so. And, uh, Don't forget Brother Warren Wilson's family. Pastor Ray, Mr. Lindley, the boys, brothers and sisters to the middle of prayer. Real good brother. Brother, I'd like to ask her, Sister Ron Conklin. Yeah. My son's mother in law. Well, I understand the dog kind of got her off the balance. She's going to, her shoulder, she's going to have to have that replaced on Monday or Tuesday. I thought that that place might. And said she had uh, fractured her pelvis and her back. So, yeah. Best said she was in a lot of pain, but it seemed to be a little bit better yesterday. But God bless. Sister Bonnie Copley fell and broke several bones. And, and Donald, um, he had another lump that come up on the other side of his. 
Tuesday, I think, had CT scan. They told him it was just, they thought it was locked way in. And hopefully that it will take care of itself. So that in itself is good news. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Someone else. Remember Brother James Atkins? He's in the hospital. I remember him and Sister Donna. She's going through a lot. Remember Sister Rose? Remember Sister Linda Wilson that lost her husband always remember me and God bless. God bless. Okay. God bless. God bless. A lot of sickness in our land today. A lot of death. It seems like it's every day or every other day, it seems like. Funeral homes are staying busy. But after a while, when we leave out of this life, we won't have to worry about no more funeral homes. We won't have to worry about no more dying because once we get up out of the grave or change, we're going to live forever. No end to it. Ain't that glad? To, ain't you glad to know that today that we don't have to lay there in the grave? Yeah, for real. Don't have to. them little branches in that tree. Yeah. That's right. Let's don't forget to thank him for the good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have, since your birth, you think of all the blessings up until now and what he done for you yesterday, what he done for you throughout the week, since, since oh, uh, that alone, and if you know my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then this don't compare to our heavenly home that awaits us. So you talk about all these some happy people is us. Yes, yes. Is us. I'm happy this morning to know that I'm one of His. Amen. Yes, I've sir. got a heaven to go to. You don't have to wonder about you that. Can, you can be one of His today. You can be one of His children. Yep. Have manifold blessings here in this life and have eternal life yeah. waiting for us. You know, there's eternal life and waiting for God's church, for all people, listen, for all the people that will love and look for His second appearing. Yeah. There's a heaven waiting for us. So get, get your sins clean through His faith in His blood. Get your sins forgiven. Call out on them. You know, the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. You have to call on Him. You have to beg Him to save you from your sins. You're lost and you're in your sins and if you don't ask Him to forgive you and save you from your sins, you're going to die that way. And we don't want you to die that way. You don't have to die that way. You can die a child of God and have a hope in your life that you'll live again. Brother Tony, that's what we're laboring for. That's what we're rejoicing about this morning. That we're not going to lay in the grave. We're going to get up. Mm-hmm. And thank God for that, that we can have a glorified body. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyone else before we go to prayer? I'm, I'm sure the Lord knows all of our hearts and our right. minds. He knows everyone that's running through our minds today. Yeah. And it would take a long time. So if you have someone critical you want to mention before we go to prayer, you can. All that would like to have interest in this prayer, I'm sure... Or, I'm sure we all got loved ones that we can that'll come to our minds even after we kneel down. There'll be some come to our minds, but the Lord knows her hearts. Remember Grandma Roger, she's not she's not feeling very good. Right my my mother, keep her in your prayers also. If she if she's blessed to live, she'll be ninety three in a couple of weeks. So keep her in your prayers. She's just about she's about past going now. So keep her in your prayers. She's been an awful good mother. Yeah. An awful good friend. Brother Roger, remember Bobby, Bobby Maynard. Um, God bless. God bless. BJ went to see him yesterday. Um, he said he was real skinny, you know. Um, but other than that, he's in pretty good health. His memory is going, of course. God bless. And if he lives till February, he'll be 95. So God bless. just remember and keep him in prayer so he will. Yeah, God bless. Do we have any loss? Just by the uplift your hand say church remember me when you pray I need your prayers God bless God bless we love to pray for you we love to see you surrender your life to the Lord so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time if there's no one else so Bill Flint will forget him he's not doing very well at all God bless Brother Clifford Napper if you would to lead the prayer for us everybody pray as you wish you can hear every one of us the Lord is once again, Master. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, as I'm the Lord, we lost the King of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Again, Lord, we birth my Thank you, Lord, this morning. We have all blessed us. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your 
This day is always, Brother Tony has asked me to kind of take charge of this service today like always, and, and uh, I think I'm going to ask him at this time to come, and I'm sure he's got a good old song for you to sing or take away every time he wants. And, and, uh, we're thankful for the Spence family, we're glad that you come out to be with us today in your family cemetery. It's a getting it's a getting anymore that uh, people don't honor their dead very much. But we're glad that for the Spence that are here today, all of the offspring. And uh, we want you to feel free here today. And uh, this is the memorial service for them, your loved ones. And uh, Brother, Tom, Brother Tommy and myself are called in the service. And Brother Tony is in charge of it. And uh, we've been in it for some time. But uh, we feel good. We feel good for the Spence family to be part of your family, be part of your service here today. And we welcome you to be here at the Little Echo Church. So at this time, we're going to ask Brother Tony to come and sing us a song. He might have two or three. You can't tell about him. So he's... <laughs> so. We take all the time. 
Don't take all the time away. Brother, do you have it than us? We want you, brother, and you're all part of this too. We're called in it. We're going to leave you all time. Nothing changes in our mind. We put that in there. Uh, we are thankful to be here this morning and to see all of you that's gathered here. And, uh, a lot of our family here. And look around and see some we don't get to see very often. And, uh, seems like funerals or memorial meetings. We're just passing along the streets anymore. It's the only way we get to come in contact. And just about that way with some of you brothers and sisters here at Echo anymore with us. We don't get to see you as much. Yeah as we used to, the Sunday morning crowd in particular, uh, but it's good to be here, good to see all of you, uh, hope that you'll sit in prayer for the service, even though this is a memorial meeting for the Wade Spence Cemetery, we, and I'm sure those that are buried out there, if they could speak, those that were ready to go, they would not want us to take away from the importance of a worship service here today, and try to throw out the lifeline to those that's on the outside. We do appreciate all of you, especially Brother Roger said you don't see much interest anymore in memorial meetings from even the families that's there, but glad to see as many of you are, yes. Martha Lois, Uncle John's family, our family, Uncle Baz's family, and others that's here. We, we appreciate all of you. We'll try our old song here. <clears throat> Once I was clothed. In the rags of my sins, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings, in pity and love, took me under. I'm a child of the King, His royal blood now flows in my veins, and I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing, yes, sir. Yeah. praise yeah. God, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> I'm a child of the King, yeah, yeah. now I'm a child with a heavenly home. My Holy Father has made me His own, I'm washed in His blood. Yeah. And I'm clothed in His love, and someday I'll sing with the angels above. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King, His royal blood. Now flows in my veins, and I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King, praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the King. Amen. Always say we're thankful to be His. And a child of the great high God that's sitting on the throne and we're part of His family and no greater name could be given to us than that. A child of the King. A Christian, an old time Christian. I'd rather be an old time Christian, the song says, than anything I know. <clears throat> Sit in prayer for us for just a few minutes. and uh, been reading a little bit in the book of Colossians, and even last night at uh, service we, we read a little bit out of the first chapter. 
And it uh, seems like our mind is still there. There's a lot of good teaching over through this book of the Apostle Paul and uh, addressing the church and some of the problems that they had. And uh, even though it was a small church, as far as we can understand, the population of that place had been declining for a while. They had a real big problem. And uh, it, it was something at that time for Paul to take some time out of his busy life even though he was in prison, so many other churches he could have been concerned with, probably a lot bigger churches he could have been concerned with, but he took time to sit down and write a letter to this little church. Never been there. He'd never set foot in this area at the time of this church in particular that we can understand, but he'd heard about them uh, through uh, a good preaching buddy of his by the name of Epaphras. When he heard about what was going on, he, he, he started off to them, even though they had problems, he began to come to them and talk with them and in a manner that was uh, seasoned with salt, uh, as we would say. I've heard Brother Nolan talk about that many times about our, our communication here and even standing as I am. And he even made mention in a verse on over in chapter 4 in this book, verse 6, uh, to let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Now, even though this church had a lot of problems, he first started out commending them for their faith, addressed them as brothers and sisters, and uh, he let them know that he cared for them and loved them, rather than writing a, a hateful letter to them and uh, nipping them on the, the toes for the problems that they had. He addressed it, but he addressed it with grace, seasoned with salt. And he accomplished a whole lot more than... They'd have probably just ripped it up and threw it over in the trash can if he just started out a hammering on them right off the bat. Now, that don't go very far, especially with sheep. You don't, you don't get much uh, respect from the sheep if you do that. But as he started out speaking to them, he, he let them know the, the life, and we read that part last night, and how that they uh, uh, were faithful and how that they had love for each other, love for all the saints, not just the little group that they were with there at uh, Colossae, but for all the saints that were around, they had a love for them. Even the little church at Laodicea, he made mention of, that they had a love for. And uh, even referred to that church and some of the problems that they had. It wasn't too far from there, about 11 miles from that church of Laodicea. And we find they had some problems too. If you'll read on over uh, in the book of Revelation, there was a letter addressed to them uh, from the Apostle John about their lukewarmness that they had. And they knew exactly what he was talking about, but they were blind. They couldn't see real clear. They were lukewarm, and he, he warned them about that. They were well acquainted with what he was speaking about because they got all their water piped in from another place, from a hot spring several miles around. Didn't have any water inside their city. Had to have it flowed in there through aqueducts to get there to have some good drinking water. And by the time it got there from those hot springs, it was lukewarm, and it'd make you nauseated. Just think about our life here. If we're not living where we need to be, how nauseating it is to God as we begin to live here and He looks down upon us that we're not living close to Him. It makes Him sick. He don't like that. And what did He say if we were lukewarm? He'd spew us out. And I don't want to be that kind of a Christian here in this world. You may be on fire for God and that's good. Or you may be cold as ice. We want you to get close to the fire so that you can feel the presence of God living down on the inside of your life. But as He started... Speaking to these folks here, in chapter 3, he began to say this. Knowing where they were, knowing that they'd been risen with Christ, knowing that they'd been converted under the gospel teaching of that brother that he spoke of there, Epaphras, and seen the problems that they had, he began to encourage them a little bit. Even though they had problems, he addressed that. But he went on, not just dwelling on that and hammering on it, but he went on and he began to exhort them, to encourage them, to go away from that and go the way that God wanted them to go. Listen to what he said in chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ. If we're Christians today, we've been risen in His likeness. We're walking in the light as Christ is in the light. As Christ is the light here upon this earth. We were in darkness. We were on the outside. That first chapter made mention how that every one of us I didn't like to hear this when I was unsaved, that we were in the kingdom of darkness. We were there in, in the clutches of the old devil right where he wanted us to be, and I didn't have a whole lot of problem out of it. But when the light of the glorious gospel spoke to me through the preaching, and that's how it will come to the next individual as well, 
When the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ began to shine unto me, it began to draw me out of that darkness. And he went on in chapter 1 there and said that he translated us, made a change, took us from where we used to be and placed us in the kingdom of his dear son here upon this earth. So then, if that's where we are, and if you're not, that's where you need to be, to be risen with Christ. What's it mean to be risen with him? means that you've been resurrected from a dead state of life in your sin and you've been made alive. Quickened is the term the Bible uses to be made alive. That you've been quickened by the power of God. The Spirit through the gospel message made us that are Christians alive. And if you're not a Christian today, you may be healthy, you may be strong, but the power of God can speak to you in your dead state of sin and make you alive, more alive than you've ever been in your life walking around here upon this earth. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. He tells us to keep our mind focused upon Him. Uh, that as we run the race uh, going through this world to have a goal set out there and our mind focus as we're running that race. For He said to run the race that's set before you with patience. We've got to have that to be pleasing unto God. Looking. Keeping our eye out there, looking unto Jesus, not the things and the pleasures of this world. For he said, he that takes a hold of the plow looking back is not fit uh, for the kingdom of God. But if we'll stay focused out there, once you start running this race, keeping your eye focused upon him, running the race, not walking, not going slow, not poking around, not sitting idle. And I'm afraid there's too many of us. Uh, that just sit idle as we go along on this race because uh, we just want to coast along. And as uh, we go along, if we're coasting, uh, that's all right. If there's a little bit of momentum that pushing us along, as uh, too many times we just put it in neutral and go along. But if we keep it in neutral and just coast, uh, there's going to be a hill we're going to have to go through in our Christian walk every now and then. Uh, and we all know neutral ain't going to get it going up that hill. Uh, or if we come to a valley coasting along in this life, what's going to happen? We're going to take off headlong, long and we're probably going to wreck as we're going down that hill in neutral. So let's get it in gear and let's do what God has told us to do even though it may be mule gear sometime. If we'll paw in the valley the way that God has told us to do with the load that He's put upon us, God's able to help us to overcome whatever obstacle may be out there whether it's a mountain or whether it's a valley because we're yoked up with Him. If you're here today and you don't know Him, you may think think I can live what's expected of me uh, out of that book right there and you're absolutely right you can uh, in yourself Tony couldn't in himself uh, Roger Maynard couldn't none of these preaching brothers or these brothers and sisters uh, that's been in it 50 years or 5 minutes uh, they cannot live it in their self but praise God we're yoked up with one uh, that's able to help us pull the load and we'll find out uh, more times than not that he's the one uh, that's pulling the load that we didn't even realize that he was there pulling. So let's keep your mind upon those things which are above, not on the things of this world. For the Bible teaches us uh, wherever our heart is, uh, there is our treasure also. So uh, let's lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven yeah. where mob and nor rust doth corrupt, nor thieves break through and steal, uh, uh, rather than on this earth. Because uh, uh, if we lay them up here, uh, uh, we need to understand naked came we into this world, uh, and naked we're going to leave out of this world. We can't take it with us. We didn't have it when we were born and we can't take it with us when we leave. Amen. So let's keep our mind focused upon the Lord. Set our affection upon Him. Our mind needs to be on the things above and not of this earth. If we get it wrapped up in the things of this world, even the church people and the things that's around us may not altogether be sinful. The things and problems, us ministers, things that come our way that arise may not be sinful problems, sickness and worry that's going on in families life. If we let it, it'll burden us down and slow us down. That's why He said Lay aside every weight. That weight may not be sinful, but if we let it slow us down, it will be sinful to us. Lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us and do what? Run that race. For ye are dead. While we're walking around, Paul was walking around. This church at Colossae was walking around. Many of them probably healthy, just like you all. But we're dead to what? To sin. 
We put off the old man and his former ways. And that's what we want our friends to do. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. My sins, all of that past has been taken care of by the blood that He shed upon the cross of Calvary, not of works that I've done or anything else that any brother or sister has done, but by the work that was completed by Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. There's not enough works me nor you can do to save our soul. I don't work to make me a Christian. We need to work because we are Christian. That's why he said, and by grace are you saved through faith, that not of your sin. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If we had anything to do with it, we'd be boasting. Look what I've done. Yes. Just like Gideon yes. there in the Bible of the Old Testament Scripture. When it came down, he had that great army and he thinned it down to just 300 men. If he'd allowed him to go out there and defeat that army with that great that big multitude of soldiers that he had, Gideon would have said, look what I've done. Yeah. But when he took those 300 and began to go fight an army that looked like grasshoppers down in the valley, he knew that God was in the arrangements. Yeah. We could overcome. For we're dead and our life is hid with Christ and God. I hope yours is today. If it's not, it can be. When Christ who is our life shall appear. This is going to happen. It's not a maybe. It's not a possibility. This is going to happen. Amen. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. We're all, every one of us, saint and sinner alike, are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yep. We're going to give an account of every deed that we've done in our body while that we lived here upon this earth, whether it be good or bad. And we're going to get a just recompense of reward for the life that we've lived. If we've laid up treasures on this earth, it's going to be sad on that day. But if we've laid up treasures in heaven, as He's told us to keep our mind focused upon, bless God, we'll hear the well done. Enter thou in. So what must we do while we're living here? Mortify. That means put to death. Therefore your members... My thoughts, my lusts, my desires, my want-tos. It's not what I want anymore, but it's what God wants. It's the end of me, and it's the beginning of Christ in me. That I would allow His life to be completed, perfected through me. And being a tool in His hand, that I might be able to accomplish His will in my life. And that will is more than just showing up on Sunday or Wednesday or whenever it might be. That's good. We need that. Uh, we have to have that. Uh, uh, but living it out there in this world. Yeah. And again, I can't do it by myself. Neither can you. You need Him yes, to help you. And you need the church to help you do that as well. Because we gain strength in gathering just like we're gathered today. Mortify your members, our, our lust, our thoughts, our actions, which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, uh, and covetousness, which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked sometime. They were walking there. We walked there, Brother Roger. Every one of us. I've said before, it's no disgrace to be a sinner, but it is a disgrace to stay a sinner. And it's even more sad to be a sinner and die a sinner and leave this world unprepared. We also walked sometime. When ye lived in them, but a change took place. Thank God for that. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. See that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there's neither Jew nor Greek, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all. The whole song we hear, He's my all in all, Brother Clifford. But Christ is all and in all. He's the great I Am. And I hope today if you came here this morning without Him, you can leave here with Him dwelling down on the inside of your heart. If you've got Him down on the inside, cultivate that seed continually fertilizing and feeding that seed in your life, Christian, so that it would grow and prosper and bring forth fruit that God 
would be purged, would be pleased with. And when we need it, He's going to purge us. He's going to trim us uh, so that we can bring forth more fruit while we're living here on this earth. May God bless you this morning. Be in much in prayer for these other two brethren as they come. Brother Roger, whoever's to follow. <coughs> I believe he's sincere about his life. Yeah. I don't believe he's dragging around. Yeah. No. We ought to be serious about our life and sometimes the way we walk and the way we when we look. Uh, <clears throat> if we're not serious, we're not going to go very far. Uh, the Lord knows that and uh, in these cemetery meetings and the memorial services we always we always think about our people that are sleeping and uh, the memories that we've had with them, some of the Spence family that's already gone on. Uh, we can't bring them back, but we know that we can go where some of them are at. They're just ahead of us. They run the race. I've thought about a lot about Brother Ed Spence. I've probably been around him more than I have some of the rest of them and his good wife and and uh, in our churches and but I think about them a lot when I pass out their cemetery out on that little point and a lot of them in the government cemetery but we think a lot about and, and we've thought about what uh, brother Tony was talking about uh, our love that we've had for each other and uh that's what God wants out of us. Uh, as we grow in our Christian life, He wants us to grow in love. He don't want us to grow in malice or envy or strife or all that. All that comes from out of the flesh. But Paul, the same, some of the same letters that he wrote to the brethren, and, and he was really pleased with their faith. I'm pleased with your faith today. A lot of you that I've been with several years, I'm pleased with your faith that you've got today. And I was pleased with a lot of them's faith that's already gone on. Some of the Spence family, some of the families in the Queen family and different families, uh, I'm happy about their faith that they had. Yeah. And I'm happy, Brother Tony, of the love that, that we've had together with a lot of the Spence family and a lot of other families that's gone. And we think a lot about this when we when we gather in the cemetery, uh, memorial services, and different places of our people uh, to share their memories with them and things that we the good times we've had with them, and and that's really uh, what we've done through life, brother Tony, is is because of the will of God and His Spirit that He's placed in us. It causes us to love one another and to grow in His love. That's what God wants us, uh, to grow in His love one to the other. When you see love start vanishing away, you'll start seeing other things move in its place. But if we've got enough love in our hearts for one another, you'll not see all this other stuff coming in. Love will put it, to, uh, put it out. And love will, will put away envy. It'll put away strife, seditions. It'll put away all this if we've got our proper love. And I, I was thinking, Brother Tony, along the same line that you was talking about, I was reading about it this morning, that we may abound in it, that we may grow in it, and that God can establish it. He can establish us in that. He can establish our goings uh, and that we can manifest our love one to the other and, and that we may be able... And, and uh, after a while, the Lord said, uh, I thought I had this open. And he said, now God Himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Paul, uh, he was directed by God. He was directed... Uh, to these letters to, to encourage the brethren there. And, and that's what kept uh, us as young brethren here, uh, some of the old brethren that's sleeping today, they have encouraged us just like Paul encouraged the church back there. Yeah. And that's what we try to do to our congregation, our brothers and sisters in Christ, to encourage one another. And uh, the Lord directed them, He directed us uh, to our people to encourage them to go on and keep the faith. That's what pleased God. That's what pleased the Apostle Paul to know their faith that they had toward Him. 
And that's the way it is with all of us, Brother Tommy. It's all, all working together uh, to the upbuild of God's kingdom that men may see our good works and glorify the Father. Now, we don't get glory. We don't want glory. But we want to give God the glory because of the way we love one another. And I think it does. I think we give God glory the way we act and the way we love and manifest our love. And the Lord make you increase. Think about it. Think about this, what, what the Apostle, he was talking to this church here. Just like I can talk to Echo Church today. Same thing. It, 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 it's just as good for us today as it was for them, Brother Tony. Amen. All of us members of the church. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. I was just thinking about this this morning. Reading about it. How God is pleased that we love one another. And toward all men, even as we do toward you, Paul said, to the end He may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints, won't it be glad? Won't we be glad if we're uh, here today or tomorrow or next weekend rejoicing and manifesting our love one to another and having a faith in God that when if He would come next weekend or this weekend, whenever He comes, that we could be in loving one another and helping one another? Amen. Brother Tony, Brother Tom, we can look right back. Uh, even our brothers and sisters in Christ that has kept the faith and moved out of this race and run their race with patience looking to Jesus. A lot of them has already run their race. And a lot of them has finished their course. Uh, but when they died and went out of this world, uh, the little Spence Cemetery, the Dammered Cemetery, the Queen, Nappers, it don't matter where they're at. I uh, Listen, they kept the faith in one of these days. I uh, Listen, they're going to uh, be able to see Jesus, uh, the One that suffered and died and was buried and rose. Uh, they're going to be able to look upon Him when He comes with all the saints. Yeah. Right. Do you believe He's going to bring the saints with Him? you believe He's going to bring all the spirits of the saints and put them back in the old body and it'll be changed and they'll get up in that day? Bless God. Listen, I've got a hope. I've got promises this morning uh, that God was able to do exactly what He's promised He'll do for us. Amen. And bless God, listen, they kept the faith. Uh, when they went out of this world, uh, they kept the faith and they kept the love in their hearts. And bless God, they was looking uh, for the, uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They left this world with that hope and that confidence and faith in God uh, that they would one day after a while, they would look upon the Lord and listen, my friends, today, and they will be able to see them. They'll be able to see Him for themselves. I'm not for another. Amen. Listen, my friend. Uh, he's going to come in the clouds of glory and He's going to call them that love Him and serve Him. Uh, they're going to call Him up out of the grave. And bless God, listen, if I'm there, uh, Brother Tom, there ain't no grave going to hold uh, my body down. But I listen, hey, if the Spirit of Him that brought again our Lord uh, out of the grave, bring Him from the dead, uh, dwell in us, it shall also uh, quicken our mortal bodies. I uh, uh, bless God, listen, uh, they ain't no grave going to hold her body down. Uh, uh, though the skin worms may eat it up, uh, it may go back to the dust, but bless God, uh, listen, when He comes, uh, He's going to call us up to meet Him in the air and forever be with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Listen, we're serving a God today that has all power. Yeah. Uh, Brother, Tom, Brother Tony was talking about us trying to live a Christian life. Well, listen, you may live pretty close. Uh, you may keep all the commandments like the rich young ruler. Uh, but you may have one thing in there uh, that you like. And you might say, what is that? Uh, my friend, listen, you may like 
One thing you may like, uh, calling upon the Lord, uh, listen to forgive you your sins. Uh, uh, you may go through this life living a good moral life. Uh, uh, but listen, my friend, uh, if you don't call upon Jesus uh, uh, for uh, uh, forgiveness of sin, uh, uh, listen, and you die in your sins, uh, uh, my friend, where the, where the church is going, uh, uh, you cannot go. Amen. Amen. Because you like to one thing. Yes, that rich young ruler, he said, Well, good master, what uh, good things must I do to be saved? I listen, he said, Keep the commandments. All these I've kept from my youth up. I listen, but my, uh, think about this. I, I, one thing uh, uh, that was standing between him uh, and eternal life or being saved. Uh, uh, Brother Tony, there's a lot of people like that today. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, they say, well, I've done all this, but there's just one thing I need to do yet. Uh, uh, my friend, listen, uh, uh, you can do that one thing. Uh, uh, listen, and there'll be another thing pop up uh, uh, that will keep you from doing that tomorrow. I, I bless God, listen, that rich young ruler. I, I brother Tom, I, I had mine his heart. I, I was on the riches. I, I listen, he said, all these I've kept I, I, from my youth up. I, and he, but he said, go and sell what you have I, and give to the poor. Listen, that went against the flesh. I, I listen, that man went away sorrowful. Yeah, yeah he lost. He was lost. He didn't get the eternal life. Listen. My friends, today you might you might like one thing, uh, but until you bring yourself down humble uh, and call upon Jesus, I uh, uh, listen to save you from your sins. I, uh, uh, my friend, listen, you'll die lost. I, uh, uh, you'll die in favor with God. I, uh, uh, listen. Uh, uh, I thought I was a pretty good old boy, uh, uh, but I sit back in the back of the house. I, uh, I begin to think. I, uh, uh, listen, my well was empty. I, uh, I didn't have no water in it. I, uh, uh, my soul was empty. I, uh, I didn't have no life in it. I, uh, uh, but thanks be unto God when I gave her my heart. I, uh, uh, he gave me that living water. I, uh, uh, bless His name today. I, uh, uh, I can go on my way rejoicing. I, uh, uh, I said within myself, I, I, Lord, I, I want to go to heaven I, I, when I die. I, I don't want to burn in the flames. I, I listen. I, I begin to call out on the Lord to save my soul and to forgive me of my sins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bless God today we've been able to bury with Him. He bur- I was buried with Him in baptism. Raised to walk in the years of life. As Brother Tony said there a while ago, my friends, it's the same thing for all of us. Listen, when we repent of our sins and go down to the water, listen, that don't wash away our sins. Listen, when He forgives us of our sins, bless God today, then we go down to the water. Not to, the baptism is not for the washing away the sin. Listen, the blood of Jesus cleanses us uh, from our sins. Then we can go to the water. uh, And listen, why? Uh, uh, Listen, he said it wasn't for the putting away the filth of the flesh. uh, uh, But it's the answer of a good conscience uh, uh, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when I got up out of the water baptism, I set my mind and my affections on the things which are above. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, uh, there's life eternal. I, I listen through Jesus Christ today. I, and my friend listen. I, I brought Tom and I'm going to get out of the way. I, I, but my friend listen. I, I, we want you to know today. I, I listen. You don't have to stay in sin. I, I, these people that died in the faith. I, I listen. They I, I was cleansed from their iniquity. I, I 
they was pardoned from their sins yeah. and their transgressions. Yeah. And they died in the living faith that when the Lord would call, let some of the Spence family that are asleep out there and they went down in faith in Jesus Christ and in God. Let some of them are going to get up out of the grave. Bless His name. And listen, we'll all get up together and go to that place called heaven. Listen, my friend. But if we fail to do what the Lord has told us to do, I will be like the rich young ruler. I will go away sorrowful. My friend, I'm sure I did a lot of times. Brother Tom, when the Word was cutting at my heart, my soul, I listen, I went away from this little place and the old Brush Creek Church. I listen a many a time the Salem Church and all the other churches. I went away many a time sorrowful that I didn't give my life to the Lord. And I'm sure you are too. I'm sure you have too. But my friend, listen. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Yes. We gotta believe it with all of our heart. Uh, listen, my friends, today I, I want you to know uh, uh, that Jesus died for your sin. Uh, he was buried in three days uh, uh, for your sins. He yeah. suffered many things, uh, uh, my friends. But bless God, uh, from the three days and nights in the heart of the earth, uh, He got up with all power and said, "All yeah. power." is given unto me both in heaven and on earth. And because I live, you can live also. Do you want to live? Do you want to go down in your grave? I with faith in God and in His Son, Jesus Christ. My friend, listen, He's the only one today. Jesus is the only one that has power on earth to forgive sin. My friend, listen, that's why you got to call upon Jesus. He'll make intercessions uh, in your yeah. behalf. Yeah. Uh, listen, for your sins, He'll make intercession for you Amen. unto His Father. Yeah. Yeah. And bless God, you can become a new creature. Yeah. You can become one of His children. Yeah. Father. Listen, you can become a child of the King. <coughs> Join heirs with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Listen. Oh, I get to these cemetery meetings. A lot of people say, why? Why do you want to go waste your time going to cemetery meetings? My friend, it's not a waste. When I can sit back on the little hill and rejoice of our brothers and sisters are sleeping out there on the hill. Rejoice in the faith that they left this world with. And look him, Brother Tommy David, I'd just soon be on the little hill. I listen, look it up and rejoicing in the hope that we got, uh, whether it's as a Spence family or the Queen family, or listen to whoever it is, listen, my friend, I, I may be on the little hill, but when the trumpet of God sounds, how Brother Mike, the dead in Christ, is going to get up. Amen. I'm not sad today. I'm happy. That's right. I'm happy Amen. that my name is written down in the fair Lamb's book of life. Amen. And if I go to sleep, it's like Brother Orville I'm laying down to the funeral home. He's just asleep in Christ today. That's right. He may not even see what a grave looks like. He may not even see it, Brother Tony. He may not even be able to look back at the old grave. He may be changed just like that. Right. If you're in the grave, you'll be able to look back at the old grave. But if you ain't in it, you'll be changed just like that. Yeah. He may be changed before we leave here today. Something to think about. Yeah. We may be laying at the funeral home. Right. And, the, and the Lord comes. He'll change that old bald body, Brother Trip. Sure He'll change him. Sure Don't worry about what God can do and what He can't do. He can do all things. Yes, sir. He yes, has all the power today. He can speak to that body down there today, Brother, and, and change it. Yeah. And He'll get up and live forever. Right. I love the Spence family. Good to be part of your service today. Good to be part of your fellowship and the life and the life of the ones of those are sleeping today. I'm glad to be part of their life and share the memories with you. This time we're going to have Brother Tommy to come and close out for us.
Well, may God bless you. We love you today. God bless you. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. I've enjoyed listening to preaching today. I felt God's spirit. I felt at home today. Been a good service thus far. We begin to think a little bit about we old timers told us one time that when it comes to cemetery meetings that we're to have church so that's what we're doing like the brother said before. But he said the reason that we started having these cemetery meetings out on these knobs was he said winter would roll around and people didn't have cars in and couldn't just run to and fro and he said somebody would die over on this ridge or over in that holler or, or over on the other fork or 12 pole and said they'd bury him. Said, but nobody could get to him right then. Said, when summer, when spring come around, said, but then we'd get together once a year and get to them places and the families would mingle and they'd share their stories and share their memories with each other about those that had died and went on and they, they, they uh, helped each other and they leaned on each other and they, they began to think about them and called it a memorial service. I, I, and you may think there's not much power I, I, in memorial services, I, I, but it's good to think about I, I, them that went on before us. I, I, if it hadn't been for some of them, I, I, we may not have been where we're at I, I, in the church today. I, I, that's the way God fixed things. I, uh, what we do today uh, uh, have a great bearing on uh, uh, others later uh, uh, the apostle uh, uh, began to write in the book of Hebrews uh, and he began to mention uh, uh, men and women of faith uh, and when he got done and naming them uh, uh, he began to say uh, uh, seeing we are compassed uh, about was so great uh, a cloud of witnesses uh, it's good to think about uh, uh, the labors that went on uh, uh, in the Lord to get this uh, 
uh, of where we're at today. Uh, they said, seeing the, uh, uh, these people uh, uh, that's had the faith, uh, uh, that's died and went on, uh, uh, they're witnesses uh, of the work of God. Uh, and it's good to think about them. Uh, and said, seeing uh, uh, that we're compassed about uh, uh, with so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, uh, let us lay aside uh, uh, all the weight uh, and the sin uh, uh, that does so easily doth uh, uh, so easily beset us uh, and let us run uh, uh, with patience uh, uh, the race uh, uh, which is set before us uh, uh, looking uh, unto Jesus uh, uh, the author uh, and the finisher uh, of the same faith uh, uh, that we look to them that they had uh, uh, for us to have the same uh, and to look to him uh, uh, the author uh, uh, the one that give us uh, uh, this faith uh, and the finisher of it uh, uh, it'll finish uh, uh, when we see him uh, uh, for ourselves uh, and we look on him uh, our faith will be over uh, and we'll not need it no more uh, uh, today uh, uh, we walk by faith uh, and we live by faith uh, uh, but it'll finish up uh, uh, when we see him uh, over on the other side uh, and let us look to him uh, uh, while we're still here uh, uh, the author uh, and the finisher of our faith uh, uh, who for the joy uh, uh, that was set before him. Uh, he endured the cross, uh, uh, despising the shame, uh, and sat down uh, at the right hand of God. Uh, uh, brother, ain't that good? Uh, uh, this morning uh, uh, Jesus knew that uh, uh, he was going to die, uh, and he went ahead, uh, and he died uh, uh, so that we uh, uh, could have somebody uh, uh, sitting at the right hand uh, of God our Creator uh, 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 that would plead uh, our case before him uh, and put us uh, in good standing uh, uh, with the God uh, uh, that purposed us uh, in the beginning. Uh, ain't you glad of that? Uh, everybody, uh, every family uh, of the earth uh, uh, can be blessed today uh, uh, in faith, uh, uh, my friend. Uh, it's to everybody, uh, uh, whosoever will, uh, uh, let him come uh, and take of the water uh, of life freely. Uh, it won't cost you no money. Uh, uh, you can buy it uh, uh, without money. Uh, uh, the old prophet said, uh, uh, come and buy me uh, uh, milk uh, and bread without money. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, it'll feed your inside. Uh, it'll give you a drink uh, uh, down on the inside. Uh, and I'm like the brethren uh, uh, before me. Uh, I'd rather be an old time Christian uh, uh, than anything I know. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, I'd rather die uh, uh, with the faith uh, uh, that I've got. Uh, as to leave uh, and have everything uh, in this world uh, and not have Christ. Uh, if you've got Christ, uh, uh, you've got all uh, uh, that you need. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, let the hunts, uh, uh, let the nuts uh, uh, come in this life. Uh, and he'll take care of it uh, at the proper time. Uh, and you'll suffer uh, uh, for being a Christian. Uh, uh, you surely will uh, uh, suffer uh, uh, for being a Christian. Uh, uh, but he said, uh, uh, latch on to me uh, and he said hold fast uh, until the end uh, and then I'll get you up uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, there's a resurrection uh, uh, coming uh, uh, for all of our people uh, and all that's died uh, in the traps uh, of a living faith uh, uh, he'll not leave us uh, in the ground uh, uh, he'll speak uh, uh, John said uh, uh, they're coming an hour uh, in the which uh, uh, they're all uh, uh, they're that are in his graves uh, uh, shall hear his voice uh, and shall uh, uh, come forth a uh, uh, son to everlasting life uh, and son to everlasting uh, uh, contempt uh, and shame. Uh, uh, what must I do uh, uh, to be saved? Uh, uh, Brother Tony, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, if they all could get up uh, and speak to their family uh, uh, that want us to have church uh, and the one thing they want uh, uh, more than anything else uh, uh, for their families uh, and not only for their families uh, uh, for a stranger here uh, uh, they want you to be saved uh, and what would you say uh, a preacher uh, uh, how to get saved uh, uh, you've got to believe in your heart uh, uh, with all your heart uh, uh, that Jesus uh, is the son of God uh, uh, 
that he came down here. He was born of a mother, but he had no earthly father. You say, I can't believe that. You can't be saved if you don't believe that. You can't believe in being saved without believing in a virgin birth because what was in Murray's belly was the Son of God. That's who he was. And if you don't believe that, you can't be saved. You've got to believe that he planned it out right on schedule. And he went to die for us. It was no accident. He knows what was coming. It said knowing for the joy that was set before him. Oh, my friend, he know he died. That's what he come here to do. He didn't come here to get out of dying. He come here to die. He was exalted one night. God glorified him up on top of a mountain. Had three brethren with him. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do. They stood there in awe. He was lit up with the glory of God. And they heard the Father say, This is my beloved son. You better listen to him, my friend. And as they listened, he was talking with Moses and Elijah. They've been dead for hundreds of years. And you want to know what they talked about? How that he is dead would be accomplished in Jerusalem. He came here with the purpose of dying of the pay my sin dead. Ain't you glad I was a sinner? Hell would be my home. But Christ died for me to wash me and clean me up. It was no accident. He died for your sins. And as he hung there with his hands spread out and nails in his hand and feet, watched again, God shook this earth and the rocks busted apart and the world shook and the man standing there said surely this was this is the son of God and on the third and appointed morning by the same power God raised him from the dead and he got up and was seen of the brethren here Thomas if you don't believe it's me stick your hand in my side and get the nail prints in my hand and Thomas confessed and you have to do if you get saved you may say I'm going to be one of them that don't ever confess I'll just believe on the Lord and I'll stay home and ain't going to get it but Jesus is a coming after one thing that's his church here on the earth and if you're not a part of it you'll not get to stay home either you'll go down where the worm dies and the fire it never quenched he got up from the dead Thomas said my Lord and my God and he told Thomas you're blessed because you sent me, son. But I set this thing up on faith. Blessed is everybody yeah. from this point throughout all history that will believe on me, even though they don't see me. Because I'll put my spirit, I'll pass by everybody's way, I'll put it in my gospel, and I'll invite them all to come unto me. And they'll have to say yes or no. Yes, Amen. You may have already said yes or no to that invitation. If you haven't had it yet, just a little while, you'll not leave out of this world until Jesus passes by and invites you into his church. If you already have, you're in bad shape. You may say, well, I still feel him. Well, you better hurry. Amen. You may say, well, I felt it and I don't feel it no more. I feel sorry for you. You better pray as hard as you possibly yes, can. Yes, sir. He got up and he spent 40 days and nights with his brother. And he told them things pertaining to the church here on the earth. Yeah. How to establish it. Yeah. How to work in it. 
how to preach it, how to deal with people. And then he said, I'm going away, boys. And they all got sad. He said, don't worry. And it's more important for you that I go away. As long as I'm here, I can only be in one place at one time. But I'm going to take my seat at the right hand of God. And I'll send my spirit. And then it can go with each one of you in every direction. And I can be with all of you everywhere at the same time. And it'll be good. And they did. And they preached Jesus crucified, raised from the dead. And they baptized thousands. And the old church took off. And she's still here today. You think it ain't good for us to remember our dead people that's gone? All of them that labored in faith, they're the one that piped this to us. Servants of the Lord. Are you piping it on to anybody else? Yeah. You got to get it first. And you can have it today. Sure can. And the brethren said, You may say, What must I do? You got to repent first and say, I ain't done nothing. Well, you're in bad shape to start with. Because we're all sinners. None good, no, not one. My old friend, they come to Jesus one time. I'm wanting to preach real bad now. They come to Jesus one time and said, Lord, there's some Galileans over here. And Pilate, the ruler, has killed them all, and he's took their blood, and he's mingled it in with some sacrifices that he offers up that he is God's in worship. And Jesus looked at them and said, Do you think those Galileans were sinners above everybody else? Because Pilate did them that way? But he said, No. He said, Except you repent, you'll likewise perish. But my friends, he ain't going to make no excuses for nobody on that day. I don't care how good you are. Well, I do care how good you are, but regardless of how good you are, how good moral you are, what good deeds you do. If you don't repent, if you don't come one to one with Jesus, pour your heart out to him and surrender your life and call on his name. And he said, if you call on him, he makes you this promise. If you'll call on me, I promise you, I won't turn you away. You may say, well, I didn't know if he'd accept me or not. He will accept you. Yes, sir. When you get wherever you belong, he'll accept you. If you come before then, you're just trouble. That's all you are to it. You can run go in the church and be baptized. You say, I thought that's what you want me to do. If that's all you do, you ain't going to be nothing but trouble and misery to yourself. Right. But when you get your heart right with God, then you join the church. Yeah. Then you do your mouth confession before you join in your baptism. Then you'll be a happy pilgrim on your way. Then you can set your mind and your affection on Colossians 3, on things above and not on things of the earth. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's very simple when it comes down to it. Jesus died to save us all. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father to make intercession on everybody calling. Don't matter what your last name is. Don't matter what cemetery you're going to be buried at. It don't matter how big your tombstone is. It don't matter how many rings and necklaces they put in your box or how beautiful. It don't matter none of that, no. The only thing that's going to matter was you right? Was you ready to leave this world? <coughs> My friends, I wonder about that rich young ruler that kept all them commandments. When he died, throughout all eternity, the roll, however long it is, I can't imagine how long eternity is. Do you reckon the thought will ever cross his mind, I ought to give all of my riches gladly? If I would have, if I would have, I'd have been glad now to have sold them and give to the poor. Do you reckon that's his mind? I'd say it is. I'd say it will be throughout all eternity. So what does that mean to us? That means to us to look at ourselves. Are they something we're holding to? Are they something we regard? Are they something that we spend our time and our effort and our energy on that when we die and begin eternity that we'd have said, hey, I wish that I'd have let all that go yeah. and done what Jesus wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's the question to ask from that. Yeah. My friends, what are we holding to that keeps us from pleasing God? The yeah. yeah. Bible says it's once appointed unto man wants to die. Some's yeah. died twice here, but it's a point to everybody to die once. Right. And after death, the judgment. 
We sang a song with Cletus and them sometimes about the judgment. Amen. Someday the Lord will come again yeah. to gather his children home. What will your answer be when that time comes? We thank you so much for your presence. Yeah. We thank you for your attention. But it's more than us preachers. It ain't about us. It's about you hearing the gospel. It's about you feeling a little still small voice pushing all the noise back out of your life and knocking at your heart wanting you to make the most important decision that can possibly be made throughout all eternity. That's what this is about. There may be some here that don't even know what I'm talking about. There may be one in this crowd that he's knocking at. I don't know. I have no way of knowing looking in your heart. All I can do and us brother can do is tell the story. Amen. And you and God will have to work this out. Yeah. But I promise you this, when you do your part, yes. he'll do his part. Amen. Amen. So if you leave out of this world and they take you off to a little cemetery and you're not ready, yeah. you won't be able to say God didn't do his part. Yeah. You won't be able to say the devil kept me from it. You have to say, he knocked. I didn't answer. And you'll stand there with your knees and knock and say amen to your own condemnation. Friends, we love you. You could be a happy pilgrim on your way if you do it Jesus' way. So today we invite you to come (coughs) while you have space, time, and opportunity. He said, harden not your heart. But he said, if you'll come, I'll accept you. So that's a good thing to leave with you. When you're ready, the Lord's awaiting. Brother Nolan used to tell us, a lot of times church people were unsaved people he'd call. They'd they'd say, I'm waiting on the Lord. (laughs) I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, I know what they mean, but Nolan taught us, you tell them that the Lord is waiting on you. Amen. He's standing with outstretched arms, saying, whosoever will, let him come unto me, and I'll give you rest. All right. We'll call for the singers to come. We'll close the service with an invitation. If there's somebody that might have believed it and made things right with God, you can come and let us know. I say I'd sure like to come, but I'm a little bit bashful. The Lord said, if you're ashamed to own me before this world, I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father and the Holy Angel. Yes. My friend, there come a time that you can't be ashamed. You've got to step out on your faith. Yeah. And they say, Why well, I have faith, I believe. But James said, about, If you've got the faith, a believer, <coughs> you'll be a doer. Do it. Yeah. He said, You believe in me, you will One do my commandments. It's God's will that you come, and I will curse. <coughs> So today, you're the one that knows where you stand with the Lord. You need to know if you need to make a move or not. We'll stand here and that'll be between me and him. But the church has got some power. The church has some authority to take care of business that no other institution on earth can. And that's to take care of a candidate and make their peace with God. So we'll stand here ready to do the work. And we're ready between you and your Lord. But Tony...
sing another song. Let's sing this song. Lift up our mind and our heart to the Lord. Thank yes, you for yes. another good service. Another good two hours. I don't know how you could have spent your time any better. Yeah, so let's just lift up our voice in song and thanks and praise to our Lord. Yeah. Amazing grace.
think about? Praise He's worthy of all the praise. Tommy, could I say something? Right on, son. Say right. You know, I've been to a, I've been to a lot of services in my life and not bragging. But I, I heard three men uh, that give us the gospel this morning. And you know, I sat there and I wondered, Brother Roger, how much longer is the Lord going to let them? Uh, preach this word to the dying world before he's going to close around. He's got a time. Uh, got I know a time. he's got a time. He's got a time. And friends, if you're lost here today, Bless you. Uh, how precious every minute is yes, uh, to your is. life. Yes, it is. <laughs> and the one I thought about the love that you preached about. And if you've got an older something against your brother, friends, get rid of with it. his help, you get can get fix it. Get rid of it. And you can leave here with a clean slate. Yes, yep. yes. It's been a wonderful place to be, and I thought, well, yes, I've heard about as good a preaching as I ever heard, but yep. I think that today topped the day for me. Yep. And I love you, brother, and I appreciate it. I love this church. It's been a wonderful place to be. The yes, best is yet to come. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Put some words right out of my mouth, brother, please. I would like to say, are there anybody in the Spence family, do you have anything that you need to speak or want to speak today? This is your family. This is your family service today. We would like to give you that opportunity if you've got something you want to say concerning your family. Been a wonderful place. Yeah. Been a wonderful service. But Roger, I'll say this. A lot of Brother Baz's family, Uncle Baz, takes care of the cemetery out there. Moe's, Brother Chris has even helped a few years. We appreciate all the hard work y'all do out there. You know, keep on keeping on. Come back. You don't have to wait till Spence meeting to come back to church. We hope you come back anytime. Yeah. Be with us. You've made us a good congregation today. Come back to next weekend, too. <laughs> Church back here tonight, 7 o'clock. If you don't have nowhere to go, we'd love to invite you to come back and be with us tonight. We've got a young brother from Old Zion, Brother Elijah Collins, who's going to try to be here, if the Lord's will. And uh, if there's any time or they don't have nobody else to preach, I might preach a little bit. So we'd be glad to invite you to come back and be with us tonight. I don't maybe Brother Tony or Brother Tommy might help. So we're just having a good time in the Lord. Amen. And uh, manifesting our love, showing our love one to another. Anything else? Be careful when you go out on this road because the traffic's to flying through here. So be sure to look and don't pull out in front of someone. Appreciate our sister churches visiting here yes. today, too. Yes. Several from Salem, Brush Creek, other churches, Philadelphia. Appreciate all of you coming today. Yes, yes. Anything else? If not, we're going to look to the Lord and be dismissed. And uh, if you will, just bow with us. We'll ask Brother Mike if he would to pray this mission for us. Your precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord for such a wonderful, wonderful service. Yeah, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you'll go down deep into the hearts of each and God everybody. Bless. Speed God bless. Lord, down through this week. The Lord, if there's one here the night one of yours, we pray that something's been yeah, said. Lord. Yeah, Lord, Lord, that will cause them to worry and not sleep or whatever it takes, Lord, to get them to change their way of life and turn it over to you. Yes, Lord. Bless us, Lord, now as we get ready to dismiss Go to our many different destinations. Look over us. Watch after us, Father. Help us to walk by faith, not by sight. And always being one of yours, Lord. Please, Lord, help us to shine in everybody's eyes. Mm, and yeah, we Lord. may be the only yeah, Bible Lord. that they get to see. Yeah. These things we ask, Lord, in the blessed name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. 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 One more thing before we break up while I got your attention. How many's got a birthday today? <laughs>